Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are starting a new course on ComSol for Beginners. We already have another course on this particular topic. However, we are coming up with a new course so that we can tell you more details about ComSol Multiphysics. This course is being done for the students, for the researchers who have just started their ComSol simulations and struggling with various aspects of ComSol Multiphysics. We'll try to talk each and every thing of ComSol Multiphysics in detail so that it becomes helpful for researchers, for students and for other technologists. So we start with the topic. The first lecture will cover about the ComSol interface. What are the options available? What are the opportunities and what are the applications we can target with ComSol Multiphysics? Before we start the first lecture, I would like to tell you that we have also created customized courses for researchers wherein we support a researcher to develop their research problem. If you want to avail this course, you can write to me in the email ID given in the description box. So let's go ahead with the first lecture. So as you open ComSol Multiphysics, you will be getting a window like this. And here you have two options the blank model and the model wizard. So initially we have to click on the model wizard. Once we click on model wizard, you will be getting this option. So those options are the coordinate systems, the coordinate system you want to go ahead with. So you have three dimensional option. If you are trying to simulate a model, <coughs> you, you are trying to simulate a case in three dimensions, then you need to choose three dimension. Similarly, you have 2D, 1D. I'll talk about 0D in a different video. I have also talked about 0D. I'll put that video in the description box so it becomes helpful. You have, apart from this 3D, 2D, 1D and 0D, you have 2D axisymmetric and 1D axisymmetric. So sometimes what happens when you do simulation, not only console simulations, but also any CFD simulation, if you have a symmetry inside your solution space then you can just take a particular section and simulate at that particular sex section and then uh, you can actually take a rotation a revolution around it to get the visualization for a 3d three-dimensional system so those kind of simulations can be tackled using this 1d axisymmetric so 1d axisymmetric means you are basically trying to simulate in 2D, but you have a plane of symmetry, you have a symmetry inside the solution space. So you are cutting a particular line and doing a simulation on that particular line. And then after the simulation, you are just rotating it to get a two dimensional view. In 2D axisymmetry, basically you are trying to do a 3D simulations, but you have a plane of symmetry, you have a symmetry in the solution space. So you take a particular plane and do your simulation on that plane, then take a revolution of say 360 degree to get uh, information about three dimension. So we have also uh, we have also developed uh, videos on this 2D axisymmetric and 1D axisymmetric. I'll put all the links in the description box so that uh, when you are familiar with ComSol and then go to those videos and learn about them. So now once uh, you are done then uh, you can choose any one of them so initially as we are learning so we should start uh, a system from say 1d so we start with 1d i click on 1d and then say we'll start with a heat transfer problem so there are multiple physics options available like uh, you have ac dc acoustics chemical species transport electrochemistry so those are the modules of comsol multiphysics and under this you have different options like in ACDC you have electric field currents, you have electromagnetic heating, you have electric circuits and similarly suppose in fluid flow if you go through the fluid flow options you can see in fluid flow you have multi-phase flow, you have single phase flow, you have shallow water equations. I will be making few more videos on this particular topic This is because this is very helpful and you have say high Mach number flow subsonic supersonic flows if you are trying to model a supersonic flow then you have to go ahead with this high Mach number flow similarly the people who are working with semiconductor they have these modules say semiconductor modules Schrodinger's wave equations 
and Schrodinger Poisson wave equation. So people who are working in quantum mechanics, they know the importance of those equations and you can actually model those quantum mechanical problem utilizing this module. You have structural mechanics module very important for civil engineers, mechanical engineers because if you are trying to simulate a beam, if you are trying to simulate a cantilever beam as, uh, or any, uh, I mean, uh, the moment of a bridge you are trying to model. So those kind of stuff you have to do utilizing this structural module. You have mathematics module. Mathematics module is a heart of the thing like if you if you don't have anything uh, if, if you don't if you don't get any physics in any of the modules available in comsol then you have the liberty to design your own module utilizing this mathematics module so i have also created a series of videos on mathematical module i'll put all the videos in the description box step by step so that you go through those videos and learn about the system so to go ahead with we go to the heat transfer module and we choose heat transfer in solids there are multiple options heat transfer in solids heat transfer in fluids and heat transfer in solids and fluids so based on your physical problem you will be choosing those boundaries choosing those physics like today i am trying to model a simple 1d conduction problem heat conduction problem so heat conduction means when heat travels through a solid object that is uh, heat transfer in solid. So I'll be going ahead with heat transfer in solid. So I click on heat transfer in solids and then it will be added to the interface. So once you click on multiple physics, it will keep on adding in the bank and then uh, you have to go for the study. You click on the study. There are multiple study options. You have stationary study. You, you have, uns I mean, the time dependent or transient studies. Uh, say for the time being today, we are trying to solve a problem of unsteady heat conduction problem. So what we need to do is we need to uh, go ahead with the time dependent option, which is the transient physics option. So I click here and I, I can double click here. If I double click, then it will be added in the physics interface. So we have taken heat transfer in solid uh, with a transient option. So once you click on done you will be getting this particular page and that has different subsections the left hand side you have the model builder section and uh, in the middle you have settings window and uh, here you have the graphics window so you know console is a gui that is a graphical user interface with software so whatever you do simulate it it generates data files or the solution files and you can actually plot those solution files real time and you can see the, your things here. Now this is a default window and uh, we have actually set the default window. If you change this window you have to you have options of reset desktop. If you go here you can see there are regular screen layout uh, wide screen layouts and if I click say regular screen layout it will be looking like this. I don't prefer to work in this particular window because I can't see the setting windows, the model window windows properly. So I don't like this particular uh, setup. So what I do is I always go to wide screen layout because it is very helpful to look at the model builder side, the setting side and also the GUI side. Now if you look at the above options, you can see there are multiple options like a home like every software has like definitions geometry you can understand from the name itself the option geometry would obviously be use, useful for creating your solution space you have materials that means a console has a material library if you are working with say a simulation uh, of heat flow through copper so you have to choose a material but why we are choosing a material because when we solve a particular differential equations then those differential equations come along with phys different physical parameters and those physical parameters are actually dependent on the materials of choice so you need to choice uh, choose a material so that you can define the appropriate parameters that is pertinent to that particular material and uh, 
you have physics option so we have already added those physics so what happens suppose you have taken the heat transfer physics from the starting window but you forgot to take say uh, you also have the laminar flow fluid flow module then what you can do you can go to the physics you have add physics option you can click here and you can add physics separately i'll be talking about all those things one by one but today i'll just be briefing about the options so you have mesh so mesh is the heart of any numerical simulation so what you basically do is you have a solution space you divide that solution space into multiple grids and the equations that means the differential equations you first discretize and those discretized equation generate a set of algebraic equations and you have to solve those algebraic equations at multiple grid points and meshing provide you those multiple grid points there are different kind of meshes in cfd you might have learned about structured grid unstructured grid so herein we can actually put multiple uh, grid options that will actually cover your unstructured and structured grids you have option for study like the way we have chosen time dependent options you can have the liberty to uh, to put multiple studies and do separate simulations for multiple study options suppose uh, what do i mean with multiple studies suppose you are trying to see how heat transfer is taking place in a transient manner that means in one study you want to know about the transient or unsteady heat transfer on the other study you want to know the steady state heat transfer so you can choose a study that is transient that is time dependent and you can do your simulation you can choose another study which would be stationary and you can actually use that for the steady state simulation so but today we'll be only simulating with transient heat transfer conduction equation now I have talked about those things and yeah results is for once you do your simulation you'll be generating data files and you can plot those data files and you can see the results in a graphics window so that is why you have multiple options you can do plotting several kinds of plots contour plots you can do uh, uh, 2d line graph 3d line graph what are those things i'll be coming each and every aspect in detail in this entire series so do watch the entire series now i come to the model builder window you can see in the model builder window i should initially look for say initially look at the parameters so the parameters is you can define your simulation parameters and you can enlist one by one here so that later and you later on you can use those parameters directly like you have a parameters of viscosity and viscosity is 0.01 uh units say and then uh, you can actually call this parameter say mu in your simulation you don't need to define every time 0 0.01 so that is the purpose like the way we do in any uh any uh, coding like you are doing a code in uh, matlab or python so we do enlisting our parameters the same thing is here and then you have the option definition i'll talk more about it in the upcoming videos uh, now I come to the geometry option if you go to the geometry you can see in the setting window you have the units option whether you are trying to choose in meter you have say micrometer millimeter centimeter inches and multiple options of uh, length scales so say for the time uh, for the heat conduction we go ahead with the centimeter options because maybe you will be taking a rod of centimeter a few centimeters of length and few centimeters of diameter as it is 1d there will be no diameter there will be only length because it's a single coordinate system now you have to right click on geometry then you will be getting multiple options in 2d i only get point and interval options because it's 2d in it's 1d in 2d you'll be getting multiple planar options like circle like a rectangle like square or other polygons so I'll be talking about those in detail. I have also created an uh, entire playlist on geometry. I'll put that also in the description box. And if you go through the geometry uh, videos, then you will learn more about geometry. So this particular series is being created and we are creating branches 
by putting description uh, links in the description box so if you follow those videos as i direct then you will be learning every aspect of comsol multiphysics so without further delay we uh, click on uh, the interval option say i want to have a solution space of say 10 centimeter uh, length so i put 10 centimeter and click on build selected so i get an option of a line of 10 centimeter distance say this is 0 and this is 10 centimeter now this would be my solution space suppose i will be putting a high temperature at the left corner and the right corner will be kept at a room temperature and over over a period of time how temperature changes at different points of the line that we will be studying and that is the ultimate option suppose now we need to know about the materials so we have defined our solution space that is one line and we need to define what is there in that particular line suppose this is a copper ware so we have to tell that uh, we have to tell comsol that put copper in this line so for that what we do is we right click on materials we click on add materials from library one window will be opened up here and then uh, we write say copper and click on search or you can enter also i write copper and pressed enter or you can put search option also uh, so there are multiple copper options and you have to learn about this console library they have their i mean they have a user guide where they talk about everything they have in console so i'll put the link of the console user guide in the description box so that you can have a look into it initially we'll be randomly going ahead with uh, a copper suppose this one solid copper say so this one we choose i can close this window and yeah so when you choose the material you'll see if it is showing in blue that means the material is selected in this solution space if you don't want that material in that solution space then you can again hover here and click then it will be deselected and you can see one error message is showing that is selection is empty that means you have chosen copper but you have not defined where your copper is situated and that is why this error message is being shown now if i select it here you will see that error message is vanished because now it understands okay i have chosen copper and here is the copper material now we go to the heart of the story that is the physics the heat transfer so whenever you go to the physics you should initially look for the equation you are solving so in the setting window you will you'll have access to the equations so this is the heat transfer equation actually this is a long equation but all the terms will be basically most of the terms not all the terms most of the terms will basically become zero and that's why we'll not be using those like we have chosen heat transfer in solid so unsteady the first term is the unsteady term, we'll, we'll keep it. And the second term is the convective term, we don't have any convection here. So this would be zero. This is the diffusive term, you can see it comes from the Fourier's law of heat conduction. I have, I have created another playlist on Fourier series heat transfer. I'll put the link in the description box uh, so that you can have access to the Fourier heat transfer in uh, heat transfer videos. So we'll be basically taking these two modules, uh, these two, uh, I mean, terms, so that we can have solution for the heat conduction and all other terms will be basically zero. Okay, so now what I do is I right click here and I choose one boundary condition. So your equation you have taken. But when you solve a differential equation, you need to define your equation, you need to define your initial condition and you need to define your boundary conditions. So the boundary to define the boundary condition in every physics of COMSOL, if you right click there, you'll be getting multiple nodes. They call it nodes. Now I click on the temperature node. I Again, you see when you choose, it shows selection is empty. That means it is looking for some place where you fit in. So we click here so in the left hand side say I define a temperature suppose I define some temperature 500 Kelvin now I was talking about parameter how you can use the parameter suppose I say define T left TL or 
T capital L say this is 500 Kelvin you can define it here and then you can call it so instead of 500 I can directly write TL so that is the usage of parameter I hope you understood what is the usage of parameter now on the other side I want to keep room temperature so I again click right click on heat transfer module choose another temperature node and I click here and keep it at room temperature suppose 293 Kelvin so this is ok by default it is chosen now this is the initial values so say at initial initially all the points were kept at room temperature only so I keep it as a default option but you can change this initial temperature now what I do is so everything is defined this is a second order uh, differential equation so you need two boundary conditions I have defined temperature 1 and temperature 2 that means both the boundary conditions are defined now I go to the option mesh again I am telling why the meshing is required because it's a numerical simulation it has to discretize the differential equation it has to convert the differential equation into set of algebraic equations and then you have to it has to solve those algebraic equation at those grid points so meshing will create that grid so there is an option of default meshing if you just click on build all you will create a mesh you can see we can do a user control you can do a physics control mesh it's normal we can go for finer extra fine okay we can see because it's a 1D system but meshing is created now you have to go to the time dependent there is an option of time range 0, 0 0.11 it basically means it starts from 0 time it goes up to 1 time and 0 0.1 means in each 0 0.1 second time it will store your data so it is basically solving but it will not store data at every point you have to command on where exactly you want to save your data so it will start at 0 it will save the data it will go to 0 0.1 second and it will solve for it it will save the data again it will save the data when 0.2 second comes okay so this way it will be going so now I click on compute option I hope this simulation will run yeah it has started running the simulation it will take a few seconds yeah this is done and you can see how the temperature is changing with time so this is how I want to see what was the temperature initially this was the temperature initially it was kept at room temperature 293 or something like that then when I go from list option at point 1 if you see this is how the temperature is varying at point 2 this is the temperature at point 3 this is the temperature if you plot 2 3 at a time say point 3 point 4 and point 5 you see this way the temperature distribution is varying and if I plot everything together as it was earlier you see it has almost reached the steady state steady state means the temperature distribution will no, no longer change but still we can see there are some gap between these two lines so what we can do is we can run the simulation for a longer duration for say 5 seconds and we record the data at every 4.4 second interval again we click on compute so it has started simulating again now I plot all the times and you see still it has not reached the steady state so let's run the simulation for say 50 seconds and store data at each one second again I run the simulation so you can see that uh, it's not like we will know everything before running the simulation once we run the simulation we analyze the data then we understand about the system better and that's why I am changing the time scale because from the simulation I am having an idea of the time scales like this one yeah now you can see it has almost reached the steady state if you zoom here 
you can see now the temperature is not changing much with respect to time so it has almost reached steady state so you can say like at some time here like say if I show you 40 to 50 say say 32 to 50 second if I plot you can see the difference is very minimal so you can say like at 30 second it has almost reached steady state so there is no unique time in mathematical language when I say it reaches steady state 30 seconds that means it all it almost reaches steady state you can't say like at specific 30 seconds it has reached the steady state but I can see after 30 seconds the change of temperature is very minimal so you can consider that it has reached the steady state so today I stop here this was the first video I was I, I think that this video was interactive and you learned many things from this video will keep on progressing with this series and I hope I can be able to help you if my videos are helping you do like subscribe to our channel and please share the videos with your peers thank you